Welcome back to How This Mom Does It, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my daughter's 10 drawer workbox cart. If you're interested in seeing how I use a 10 drawer workbox cart to organize a lot of homeschool materials in a little space, stay tuned. So these are my two 10 drawer workbox carts. I have one for each of my children. This is my preschoolers and this is my first slash second grader. She is by age first grade but doing a lot of second grade work. I have had this cart for about two years and I've had this one for over a year. They've held up quite well. Um, we use them like almost every day basically. So the kids are in and out of the drawers getting things and they have been well loved. The only thing that I have noticed about these carts, and it could just be the particular brand that I've got or could just be how we use them. I do keep them really full and I've noticed it mainly happens with my daughter's carts because they are fuller and heavier that um, the metal on the side will kind of shave some of the plastic and it ends up on the ground. So I just sweep up underneath it. But other than that, they've been, they've been pretty sturdy. So I've been pretty happy with my purchase. I did get these on Amazon. Um, and I got a really good deal on them. I've got them both for between $30 and $40, I believe. It, definitely around $40 or less. Um, it, but it's been a while. I don't really remember exactly. But I know that it wasn't a huge investment. Um, but it was a little bit of money. So to get two of them, um, I had to think really carefully. Is, is Would it work for us or not? And I really wasn't sure um, in terms of our space. But it's worked out great. Um, so it was definitely worth the investment in the long run. And um, I don't have a homeschool room. So having a designated space for all the kids' school stuff um, has really helped out. And it really doesn't take up a lot of space like I thought it would. And I do like how it, they're on wheels. So um, I'm coming to you from my dining room. It's in a little corner. Um behind a chair so the kids can still get to it just fine and they move the chair when they want to but this is just the space that works best for us and when we have people over or something like that have um, we've had some dinner parties and we've needed the space so when that happens we just roll them out into one of the bedrooms to store so it works out really great so I'm gonna go ahead and get into what's in them I'm gonna do a separate video on my preschoolers cart um, I know some people don't have a preschooler. Some people just have a preschooler. So I thought I would just break them into two parts so you don't have to watch a video that doesn't really pertain to you. And plus it could make the video really, really long. So I will be doing a separate video on the preschoolers uh, workbox cart. So keep an eye out for that. But this video is going to be on my first slash second grader. So I'll go ahead and get into what's in her boxes. So on top of the workbox cart, I have my daughter's work binder, and that is where I put work for the day or week, depending on what we're working on, um, and then that way she can grab the binder and work on it if I need her to work a little more independently than I can. So that um, is where I keep that so she can easily um, get access to it. And I do have a video on my binder system that you can check out if you'd like to. I keep her um, little writing writer's workshop portfolio and I actually did a video on that as well so if you want to look at um, how I put together writing help for her then you can check out that video um, I keep her clipboards and this is our traveling clipboard and I show this in our road schooling road uh, how to homeschool on the road video um, and that is where I keep that so we can um, always know where that's at and get access to it fairly easily and this is her new home clipboard and I have actually have her work clipboarded um, on the clipboard already for today for when we get started. Um, sometimes she likes to use the clipboard rather than the binder just because she doesn't have to deal with the rings on her on the side um, interfering with her work. So um, today I had some writing for her to do and some things so I put it on the clipboard so it's ready for her and she can just grab it when she's ready. And then some extra notebooks that she uses for writing and um, that type of thing. And then we have her Bibles on top so she can get access to them easily. And then also the um, the um, shared reading books and these are the books that she reads to me 
um, so I can check her reading um, progress. And she's finishing up with the littles go to school, and she's going to be starting Cam Jansen. So I had both of these up there for her because she's just about to finish one of them. And then next to that, I have her pencil box case for the year. And this has her glue stick and pencils and all that. And I showed this in a previous video too. And then this is her um, little box of math manipulatives. So I have a lot of um, math manipulatives, but I find it's helpful just to have like a little set available so I can just tell her to go grab what we need um, to work on her daily math review. And it's usually like a bag of coins and dollars, um, a small bag, and some um, counters of some kind and some color tiles. So, and her duty clock, her little mini student clock is in there as well. So that is what I keep on top so it's easy to access. And the first drawer is actually um, just her drawer. So it has her little stress ball that she'll squeeze when um, she has to move around when she does her work. So it kind of helps keep her hands busy when she's doing things. And then I have a pointer for when we use some of our um, posters and things like that. And this is kind of just her drawer. She has her little Shopkins shop list. <laughs> Whatever she wants to put in there, this is kind of her drawer to store her things. And the next drawer is our um, handwriting drawer. So I have the handwriting book we're currently working in, some extra paper for her to use. There's a puzzle book in there for some reason. Um, and then the next handwriting book is um, there as well, plus some pencils and erasers and some extra of her stuff I, we have in that drawer. And next is our spelling and vocabulary drawer. So in it I have her planner and I have a video on how I use the planner to help teach spelling. So if you'd like to check that out, you can. And I also have her spelling workout book. And I did choose to keep the spelling book intact this year instead of ripping the pages out and putting it in our binder because we do use a binder system for most of our workbooks type work. Um, but the format of the book I just thought worked better staying um, intact into the actual workbook. So we're trying it out this way this year and so far I do like it better um, with the page not being ripped out. So that's how we're doing that this year. And then um, I have her Wordly Wise book and that's the book we're using for vocabulary and I have an overview of this available if you'd like to check that out. And then I have extra spelling practice. So when we finish spelling for the year we have some extra spelling work to do some review with. Um, if we stay on target with spelling workout then we should finish before the end of the year. So I like to have extra spelling resources available if we And this is my daughter's phonics and reading drawer. It is the most full out of all the drawers. We do use several different resources. So I'll go ahead and just get into it. This is um, her Abeka reader and we don't use the full Abeka program. We just use the, um, the practice reading books. We are using a Houghton Mifflin textbook and this is the phonics, one of the phonics readers that goes with it. So she's working through that one right now. We use um, the reading skills books um, from Flash Kids. I believe it's Flash Kids. It's a Harcourt a brand. Um, and she really likes this brand of workbooks. So we use this one for extra uh, comprehension practice. And then this is the textbook that she likes that we're continuing on with. And then I also store our phonics books, uh, our, our plaid phonics workbook and the practice book for the textbook that she likes. Um, both of those I store in here. I do tear the pages out of it and put it into our binder just for easy storage. It makes it easier when we're going places and um, having to be mobile with our homeschool materials. Not having to take all these books is really nice. So I'll just pull out into our monthly binder what we're going to be accomplishing for that month. But I do store the workbooks themselves in this drawer. So I always know where they're at. Um, and if she wants to work ahead, she knows where they're at and she can grab them and I can pull out the pages. So um, that's where I keep that. And then there's also some um, tests that go along with the um, textbook in there if we want to use them. So that's what is in the phonics drawer. So next is our grammar and writing drawer. And in it I have, um, this is actually just a fun book that um, goes over parts of grammar and helps to teach it in a fun way. So we are using that this year. 
And then I have her writing journal, and she does do some creative writing a few times a week. And this is the writing skills book, and this is what we're using for the main part of our writing curriculum. Um, we used this last year, and she really loved it, and so we're going to continue using that this year. This is some extra, um, it goes along with the writing skills book, and it's just some extra practice. And we are using first language lessons, so that is in here as well. And we do do some other things like grammar minutes um, and some other writing um, assignments that I give her and different unit studies. And all of that is in our binder for the month. So that is in a separate video if you'd like to see that. These are just any of the workbook, work, workbooks and um, physical books that we use um, daily. So this is our math drawer. And we actually have most of our math curriculum in our monthly work binder. We use my math, a daily math review, and math minutes, and that's all in that binder. And I plan to do a video uh, overview on all of our math and how I put it all together. So be on the lookout for that. I hope to get that out pretty soon. Um, but these are the extras, the extra workbooks and things, um, just to give her extra practice and to fill in things. We get my math from our charter. And I don't have to use it, um, and I just basically use it as a supplement. But I did take their workbook, and it's pretty thick. It actually has, I believe, two volumes, so there's another one after this one. They also gave us their online program, and it has um, games and videos and all kinds of fun stuff, and my daughter really enjoys that. And when we do do um, worksheets out of this, I will tear them out and put them in our binder. But it's a pretty big workbook and I needed a place to put it. So it lives here in this drawer just to kind of stay out of the way and we can grab it when we need it. And behind that is um, Life of Fred Apples. I have the first four books of Life of Fred. We actually started using it last year and it just didn't work out for us last year. We were just really busy and um, we used Math Mammoth. And by the time we were done with the, all of our Math Mammoth for the end of the week we just didn't do any more math and I wish we'd stuck to doing Life of Fred because she really does enjoy it but for our charter we have to produce written work and it really just wasn't enough written work I didn't feel like so I'd like to integrate it more this year and possibly do like fun math Saturday where she does it on a whiteboard because she really did like Life of Fred so I hope to integrate that more um, as the year goes on so I'm leaving it in there right now so I don't forget about the book and then I have extra math workbooks and things that she can uh, move on to if she gets bored or just needs some extra practice. Like this is a Flash Kids brand. It's the brand of workbooks that my daughter really likes. It has lots of color and pictures and stickers and just fun stuff. And there's some more um, fun workbooks in there too. So that is our math drawer. So this is our science drawer. And the main part of our curriculum is elemental science, grammar, stage, biology, which is basically life science. It's uh, animals, human body, and plants. And most of the elemental science that I have is uh, digital, and I've printed it. So it is in our monthly binder. Um, but I actually got the printed copy of the student workbook from our charter. They paid for it. So I have... Um, this student workbook and we keep it in here for her. I do plan on doing an overview of our science curriculum because I really do like um, this series so far. Um, so I'd like to show um, a little more, bit more about it because I didn't really know much about elemental science. When I looked online about it, I would have loved to see more reviews and I really didn't see a lot on it. So I kind of went into it not knowing what I was going to be getting and I really liked it. So I purchased some of the extras as well, the coloring pages and the lab books that go with it. So I will be um, doing a video pretty soon, hopefully, on that so I can um, share what elemental science looks like. But this is a student workbook, and we keep it in here so it's easy for her to access. And since we are doing um, animals, and I do have a lot of um, books that I supplement with, um, encyclopedias and themed books, paperbacks, picture books that we add in, and I hope to get a video up on that as well. Um, but this isn't all the science reading she's doing. This is just what I keep in this drawer. But she's doing the Christian Liberty Press's Nature Reader. And this is book one. I also have book two because I wasn't sure what level would be good for her. 
So I got the kindergarten for my son, and I got the level one and level two for my daughter, and she's buzzing through it pretty quickly. So she'll be on to level, the level two book probably, I would say mid-year, because we're only reading like a story or two a week. But um, it's going pretty quickly. So, um, but I do like this. It's pretty cute, and um, I can show it closer if anyone's interested in seeing them. But um, that's something else that I keep in the store, and she does that independently. I just give her the assignment, the reading assignment, and she does it on her own. And then I've added in the Abeka Health, Safety, and Manners reader, and I, this is level two. We have level one as well. I got these actually used for like $2 each um, at our used bookstore. Uh, but I really like it. I don't make her do any of the writing assignments. I'll just make her read. So I'll assign her a page or two a week and she just reads it. So it's just some good extra um, health and safety information for her. And it helps her with her independent reading. Also, I have the Startup Science series. And I got this off of Rainbow Resources. I believe it's four books. Each book is different. And this one is the Life Science and um, so this basically is a thin book, if you can see. But um, we're going to be going through that this year. And I basically just pick out the pages that go along with what we're learning in elemental science. So uh, she does like a page or two a week. And it's just for some extra fun. And it is, I'll show you real quick, lots of color and pictures and fun activities. So she likes that. And she does that independently. And then the rest of the um, drawer is just extra science stuff that I have her reading or doing. Um, this is a National Geographic. I have a human body puzzle. Um, some fun extra workbooks. And like the an animal puzzle and her little magnifying glass that they keep in their drawers. Um, I have a lot more science materials that are the fun hands-on stuff. And I'm going to try and get a video up on that pretty soon, too, because I've got some really neat things that we add into our science. So be on the lookout for that video. But this is our science drawer. So this is our social studies, history, and geography drawer. Um, I do do unit studies that I mix in that stuff like Johnny Appleseed, Constitution Day, things like that. And if we are working on a lap book or something, I will keep it in this drawer. We are also doing Story of the World, but for that, it's basically the storybook you read to them, and we do most of it actually on CD where we listen to it, and then we have the activity book and the student pages, and all of that I pretty much keep up with me at the counter where we do our work, and the activity pages and everything are in our monthly binder, so that is all is stored in a, in a different place, and then our books that we're reading to go along with Story of the World are in our monthly book basket. So those are stored in a different place. So how I'm using the this drawer right now is mainly for geography. And we are using Map, Charts, and Globes by Modern Curriculum Press. We did the book A last year, so we're continuing on with book B this year. And I had picked this out separately, but our charter actually pays for it. So I went ahead and took the free version, and that's what we're using this year as our main geography curriculum. Um, Story of the World does have map work in it, but it doesn't really teach about maps, and this teaches about maps and globes and, and all of that, so we're using that. And then in here I also keep our Highlights Top Secret Adventures. This is actually a really neat program, and I got these used for less than $2 a package, and so less than $2 a country, and it comes with a puzzle and all kinds of stuff. And basically every month we're exploring a different country through a mystery that you have to solve. So it's pretty cool. And I can show um, more about it if anyone's interested. I probably will do a video on it later on because it's a pretty neat program. And I had never even heard about it until I found it used. But it is pretty cool and my daughter loves it. So we keep that in there so we don't forget to do it. And then I just have some extra fun geography things in here. Uh, geography books, some extra puzzles, and I have other atlases that are on our bookshelf, but this is more just like fun things to keep in her drawer. So if she has some extra time, I can tell her to go to her drawer and pick out a puzzle or something. And that is our social studies drawer. So the next drawer is our Bible drawer, and we keep several different Bibles in here, ones that we aren't using very much right now. We have the um, 
primary Bible reader from Rebecca, my favorite Bible, a precious moments Bible, and some notebooks for my daughter to write verses in and, and draw pictures. And then we're also using, the main books that we're using this year are the Beginner's Bible and the Jesus Storybook Bible. And we're actually listening to the Jesus Storybook Bible, the CDs, in the car. And I really like the reader, David Suchet. He does a great job reading them, and my daughter really loves it. So we listen to those, and then she does readings out of the Beginner's Bible. And in addition to that, my mother-in-law comes and does lessons with them. So I don't have a set curriculum for, um, for, for our Bible studies. She does that for me. So she does a lesson and a craft and all that once a week. So it's a huge blessing and takes that off my shoulders, which I definitely appreciate, and the kids love spending time with Grandma. So that is my Bible. And the last drawer is our language and art drawer. So we are doing draw right now, but I keep that up with me um, next to my work binder that we work through, um, just because it's easier and we can go through it together. But this is where I keep her extra stuff. So I have this um, how to draw book. It's Watch Me Draw. And I got this from Rainbow Resources. And I like this one in particular because it was the zoo and we were doing animals this year for science. So it all kind of went together and it teaches them step by step how to draw. So I have that. And then I keep our Spanish and we are working through the complete book of Spanish, grades one through three. And I got this at Costco actually. And then I have a Let's Speak Spanish first book of Spanish words. And I got that book used for like a dollar. So that's what we keep in this drawer and some notebooks that she uses with it. And that was our last drawer. And that is my daughter's 10 drawer work box cart. So we use the binder method to store her to be completed work and completed work. And I have a video on that if you're interested in seeing how I do that. And I will link that below. But this is how we use the 10 drawer work box cart. We have a drawer per subject. And that's where we store all of her workbooks, readers, all of that. Those all go into these drawers. And because we don't have a schoolroom, Trying to organize everything in a very small space is key to keeping us on track and focused and being able to find all of our stuff. So that is how I use the um, workbox cart to keep my first slash second graders curriculum organized. If you're interested in seeing more about the curriculum, I have videos for my first slash second graders curriculum as well as my preschoolers. So you can check those out if you'd like to. And I do plan on doing a video for my preschoolers work box cart um, pretty soon so be on the lookout for that as well because I do do some different things with his drawers. So I, I hope you like this video and if you do click like and subscribe and I will see you next time.